Okay, in previous videos, we've talked about oxidation and reduction and uh, how we can make alcohols through reduction reactions. In this case, we're going to look at oxidation reactions of alcohols. So we saw previously how I could make alcohols from the reduction of aldehydes and ketones. And so now we're going to go in the opposite direction and see what happens and how we can oxidize alcohols to form aldehydes, ketones, and um, as we'll see, carboxylic acids. So if I start with a primary alcohol, when I oxidize it, if you remember for reduction, essentially we're adding two hydrogens, one to the O uh, and then the other to the alpha carbon. In this case, we're taking off um, an H from the alcohol and an H from the alpha carbon. And so I can oxidize a primary alcohol into an aldehyde. Now it turns out as long as I have hydrogens on the alpha carbon, I can further oxidize that to form carboxylic acids. In the case of secondary alcohols, since I only have the one alpha hydrogen, I can only go in that one step. So I can only oxidize a secondary alcohol into a ketone. Because there is no alpha hydrogen, I can't do another oxidation step. And so the oxidation has to stop at a ketone. And then for tertiary alcohols, right, because it doesn't have any alpha carbons at all, generally oxidation is not possible. So it turns out there are a large number of oxidizing agents that we can use to convert an alcohol into an aldehyde, a ketone, or a carboxylic acid. One of the most common is chromic acid, and it's generally formed from either chromium 6-oxide or sodium dichromate in aqueous solution. So in both cases, I can convert the chromium 6-oxide or the sodium dichromate into chromic acid. Now what this would look like in an organic synthesis step is I could either use the chromium 6-oxide along with um, acidic conditions and acetone, or we might show it as sodium dichromate along with sulfuric acid and water. All right, so if we look really briefly at this mechanism, it's going to occur in two stages. Uh, and we're not going to worry too much about the mechanism for the first step, but essentially we turn the alcohol upon reaction with our chromic acid into a chromate ester. And then what we end up with is essentially an elimination reaction, right, where we form a carbon-oxygen double bond rather than a carbon-carbon double bond, right? But this looks like, um, you know, any other E2 reaction where we have the proton transfer, the carbon-hydrogen bond becomes a pi bond, and then we have the loss of a leaving group. All right, now the, this chromic acid reaction is going to oxidize a secondary alcohol into a ketone, but as we've seen before, aldehydes can be further oxidized into carboxylic acids. And so chromic acid is going to take our primary alcohol all the way to the carboxylic acid. If we wanted to stop at the aldehyde, we could use a more selective oxidizing agent. And one example of that is pyridinium chlorochromate, or we abbreviate that PCC. If we react PCC with an alcohol, it will stop at the aldehyde, and it won't go all the way to the carboxylic acid. All right, I don't know if I strictly needed this slide, um, but because... Secondary alcohols can only be oxidized to a ketone, whether we use the chromic acid or the PCCE, I'm sorry, or the PCC, uh, the secondary alcohol will always stop at a ketone. All right, now these chromium compounds make for very efficient oxidizing agents, but a huge disadvantage is they're toxic and they're terrible for the environment. And so uh, in recent years, chemists have looked for green alternatives to these chromium compounds, and our book mentions two of them. So one of them is called Swern Oxidation, where we use dimethyl sulfoxide and oxalyl chloride, or COCl, and then the whole thing in parentheses, two. Um, so the reaction between these two compounds will form the active oxidizing agent, and if, if you want to look at this, the book gives this mechanism as well. I'm not going to go into, uh, into detail with this mechanism. 
And another reagent that we need in the swern oxidation is one that we've used uh, before in this chapter, and that's triethylamine. Uh, and so this is sort of the stage two. After we form the active oxidizing agent, uh, then that active oxidizing agent reacts with alcohol to give us our oxidized products. Now, as we saw previously, the chromium reagent, PCC, uh, just converts a primary alcohol and it stops at the aldehyde. When we do swern oxidation, uh, it also stops at the aldehyde, so it won't further oxidize the aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. Now, the book has uh, a second green uh, oxidation reaction uh, that I'm actually not going to make you responsible for. I just wanted to show the slide, uh, but DNP oxidation is another green alternative to these chromium reagents. Okay, let's finish off with just a couple examples. Um, so I want to know what the products of this following reaction are going to be. So I'm starting with a primary alcohol. I'm using uh, reagents that will give me chromic acid. And so that's going to take the primary alcohol from an aldehyde all the way to a carboxylic acid. So when you're making the carboxylic acid, be sure you keep the same number of carbons, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So the carboxylic acid I'm going to get, I've got my five carbons. And then I'll add on the carboxylic acid. Okay, in this example, they've given me the reagents and the products, and they want to know what reagents I would use to convert those reactants to the products. So I'm again starting with a primary alcohol, but I'm stopping at the aldehyde. So I don't want to use one of the chromic acid reagents because that's going to take me all the way to the carboxylic acid. So I think we learned two ways that we could do this. Uh, the first way, we could react it with the chromium reagent PCC. Or the second way, I could do the Swern oxidation. And so those reagents would be the DMSO, the COCl2, and then we need the triethylamine. So there are two ways that we could achieve this transformation. Okay. Uh, in the last example, so we're using uh, chromic acid again, and so this will convert secondary alcohols into ketones, it'll convert primary alcohols into carboxylic acids, and so right, we'll convert this guy into a ketone, we'll convert the uh, primary alcohol into a carboxylic acid, and then we also have an aldehyde, so it'll go ahead and oxidize this too, and it'll convert that into a carboxylic acid. So uh, my product in this case is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. All right, and then we'll get a ketone here coming off carbon one, two, three, four, five. I'll get a carboxylic acid, and then we'll also convert the aldehyde on the end into a carboxylic acid.